Good morning. It's good. To, <laughs> it's good to see you this morning. We're gonna open up in prayer this morning before we get started. Thank you, Lord. Once again, we're blessed and honored to be here in your house, Lord. And we just we're so. It's just a time, Lord, that it's we just shouldn't take for granted, Father, the opportunity and the. Uh, um, chance that we have, Lord, that we just don't take it for granted, Father, to come into your house freely, Lord, and to worship you. And so, Father, as we do, Lord, I just pray that we just give our our best to you, Father, as we sing praises unto your name, Lord, and as we open our hearts to you and show our love. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's Let's all stand and worship together as we give God praise and glory for his goodness and his faithfulness. Doesn't matter what I sing, how I sing, but we're going we're gonna to praise him because he is worthy. We're singing some songs that are kind of old, but guess what? We need to sometimes go back to the basics and be reminded of God's power. In Romans 16, 20, it says, And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly the grace of our lord jesus christ be with you amen that means he's under our feet no matter what we're going through no matter what how things look we've got to know that he is under our feet and with god everything is possible so let's let's sing unto him today when i went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. Took back what he stole from me. Took back what he stole from me. When I went to the enemy's camp. And I took back what he stole from me. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet.
Hallelujah, Lord. We need to thank him for what he's done. There is power in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah, Lord. We praise you, God, because you are worthy, Lord. I just want
uh, praise and worship him a few moments because he is good, because he is great. Thank you. Let's just say Jesus. Jesus. I speak your name, Jesus. Jesus, there is power in the name. Thank you, Father God, for being real to us. the glory and all the honor. Jesus, we speak your name, Father. We speak Jesus over every situation, over all anxiety, over everyone here today. Jesus, thank you, Father God. Jesus, we speak your name, Father. Thank you, Father.
Worship team, to God be the glory. Thank you for leading us in worship as we enter his courts in praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hall- oh, there's my brother. I was looking for you earlier. Good to see you. Good to see Mrs. Brother, <laughs> sister. Good to see everybody this morning. Welcome to Vision Church in Lockhart, Texas, as we continue Praising God and worshiping God and and hearing the word of God. Oh, good morning, brother. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, yeah. Sister, I see you too. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see everybody. Um, that's a good time in, 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 in the worship, you know. Uh, the name of Jesus. You know, I speak the name of Jesus. Jesus, there's power in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the devil, the demons will flee. 10,000 will flee by one hand and 10,000 by the other hand. It's in the name of Jesus is where the power is. And the devil is under our feet. All things are under our feet, including the enemy. So when he gets in your face and he's trying to roar like a lion, you tell him, you are under my feet, devil. And that's where you need to get on back down there and stay there in the mighty name of Jesus. Because we have the power, we have the victory, we have the authority over the devil. And he should not be in our face messing with us at any time. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, We're going to do tithe and offering. Uh, I just want to speak to that just for a moment. You know, God does not need our money. We need the discipline. Because without the discipline, you just running wild, throwing that stuff everywhere. You know, without the discipline, when the big ship comes in, you won't know what to do with it. You'll go to Vegas and throw it all away, like the other people that that are down there doing it right now. But with that discipline, you'll know, oh, 10%, 10% to my church. Oh, 10% to my savings account. Then we'll see about a vacation. But with that discipline comes the knowledge of knowing how to handle your money. And that is what God's trying to get across to us. He don't need your little old 10%. He can send an angel down here with a bag of gold right now to take care of this church for the rest of the days that we're here on earth. But it's us that he's trying to bless through our giving, you know, and and to to learn to give and to learn to be disciplined in your spending. Stay away from them credit cards. Those things are financial suicide, death. Uh, we won't even go there, but I, I've been there a few times. It was, a, it was a bad, not good. Nothing good came from it. So anyhow, God just wants to teach us how to be disciplined with our money, how to support the church, how to be obedient to his word so that he can bless us. Amen. It's through that giving, through that obedience that he blesses us, opens the windows of heaven, rebukes the devourer for our name's sake, pours out a blessing that you cannot contain. Shall I say more? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There you go. So with that said, let's refer to Malachi 3. I think we're going to go back a scripture to verse 8. And if I may direct your attention to Malachi 3 verse 8. And I quote, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, therein, have we robbed thee in tithe and offerings? You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Verse 10, bring ye all the tithes into my storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive, I receive it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Pour it out. And I will rebuke the devourer for your name's sake, that he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruits before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And last Sunday, I kind of, I kind of elaborated on that a little bit. That's, a, that's, your, that's your livelihood right there. They were farmers and goat herders and winemakers and all that stuff. I grew cotton. I sold it to this person. They made clothing and so forth and so on. 
That's how they made their livelihood, uh, growing, growing plants and things like that and farming animals. And that was their livelihood. So this is talking about your livelihood right here. So your money don't run through your fingers like water. You know, you get paid and you're like, oh, wait a minute. Where did it all go? So we need for God to rebuke the, the devourer for our sakes. So with that said, if you will, if you have offering and tithe, please bring it up here and uh, bless God. You know, um, there's several different types of, of giving. Tithe and offering is number one. Number one giving. The number two giving is to God's man. What is God's man? Well, that would be our pastors. If you were living several thousand years ago, it would be the house of Aaron. They were keepers of the temple. They didn't have an inheritance in Israel, a piece of land. They were keepers of the temple. That was God's man. Well, today, there's God's man and woman right there. So the third one is giving of your stuff. Say you want a car. I'm going to plant a seed of my stuff. I'm going to give my car away so God, can, I can plant a seed and God can bless me with another car. The fourth is giving to the poor. Giving to the poor. Okay, so now you have a little short lesson there on four different types of giving. Uh, everybody's finished. Now we will pray for the offering and, and the people, and we'll move on to the announcements. Father God, in Jesus' name, I lift up all of your people here this morning, all of these saints in the mighty name of Jesus. And we lift up this offering and tithe to you in the mighty name of Jesus. And we stand on Malachi 3.10 and we bring our tithes into the storehouse and we test you here, here now. And we stand under that open window and we receive the blessing that we cannot contain. And we thank you for rebuking the devourer for our namesake. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. amen. Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for teaching us what we need to know to survive in this world today. You know, we can't, can't do without it. We can't do without him or we'd just be like all the other people going from hailstorm to hailstorm. Think about that. You'll see them. Hailstorm to hailstorm, you say, man, they need Jesus. Man, they need Jesus in a bad way. And that's why they're going hailstorm to hailstorm, because they ain't got no Jesus. And that's why we're here, to tell them about Jesus. That's our job. That's why God has us here on earth at this time, to tell people about Jesus. Okay, announcements. Follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Hallelujah. Thank you for social media. If you have these social media outlets, help us advertise Vision Church of Lockhart. Every Sunday and Wednesday, invite people to comment on what's going on at Vision Church of Lockhart and put your own encouraging words out there. Visit us online at vclockhart.com. Wednesday night Bible study. Lessons from Elijah classes. For, and there's also classes for youth and children. Uh, I encourage you to come on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. It's only an hour. But it's uh, very, very good, very power-packed teachings, and um, you will not be disappointed. Um, it, it's just really good. It's really, really good, really, really good. Did I say that? Really, really good. You will be blessed. You will be blessed by that uh, lessons. Um, okay, coming in August, Saturday, August 13th, 9 a.m., time change from 9.30 a.m., Ladies' breakfast meeting. Hallelujah. So it's going to change from 9.30 to 9. You'll start 30 minutes early on August 13th. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Saturday, August 20th, 9.30, men's breakfast meeting. Hallelujah. Pass the tacos and the donuts. Okay. Uh, Sunday service, English at 9 a.m. and Spanish service at 11 a.m. And thus concludes the announcements. So now, get excited. It's time for the word. Please welcome Pastor Sally Lujan. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Good morning. It's good to see everyone today. I missed all of y'all last week, but I was watching y'all online. <laughs> I didn't want to pass up a, a message from my sister, Sandra. 
And uh, y'all will be hearing her again next Sunday. All right. She'll be uh, taking over next Sunday as well. We're going to be out of town. I'm so excited. Uh, Lord is good. I'm going to get to go see my grandkids. I can hardly wait. <laughs> but they're a blessing from the Lord. Amen. I'm a little overwhelmed right now uh, with the worship. Wasn't it awesome? You know, I'm, I'm always amazed at how uh, the message comes and, and, and the music when, when, when I get here and the music is backing up my message. <laughs> you know, the Holy Spirit will do that. Amen. We're going to continue to talk about the Holy Spirit. We've been talking about it uh, last time, a few times that I was uh, preaching and I had like two, uh, I had two more, we were, we, last time we were talking about the ministries of the Holy Spirit and I have two more points. We had uh, two more points to go over and I want to bring those this morning and, and then, um, and we'll go from there. Amen. Sister Grace, I was just amazed at, at the music you sang this morning. It, it goes right with my message. It couldn't be more perfect. And I was just giving honor and glory to, to the Holy Spirit, the, the Lord that leads us and directs us. Amen. We're one body. I know. So she was hearing me even though she didn't know what I was going to talk about this morning. But the Lord knew, right? The Spirit that lives in us knows. Amen. All right. Well, let's pray and then we'll get into the message. Heavenly Father, we just thank you this morning, Father. We come with a heart of surrender, Lord. Lord, open our ears, our eyes, and... And help us to uh, see and hear what the Spirit has for each and every one of us. Um, Holy Spirit, thank you that our hearts that are, would be good ground. And the words that you have for us, Father, that we would take it to our heart, Father. And there would be seeds planted in our heart, Father. And at the same time, Father, we would be able to root out all those bad seeds that have been uh, placed in our heart and, and root those out and replace them with good good seed and good soil. And so, Lord, we just give you all the honor and the glory this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 <clears throat> I also um, been enjoying uh, uh, Brother Tony as he talks about uh, tithes and offering. You know, it, it's so true. God is so good and and he will bless you, and he's not, it's not about the money or, or the assets. It's about your heart, amen, and you bring it with a heart of joy, and, and I was being reminded, and I thought I'd share this right quick. I'm sure uh, Amano Omar, he, there for a couple from the Spanish service, and I was watching both services last week, and, and he does tithes and offering, and he always brings a testimony just like, like you do. He testifies about what the Lord has been doing. And, and, um, and just like also that I told you about the $1,000 that, that we gave from the church and, and how it came back to the church and how it even came back to my own personal uh, bank account. It's amazing. Amen. But we don't give to get, but we give. And, we, and if, we, if the Lord puts something in your heart, you need to do it because the Lord's trying to get something to you. He's not trying to take something from you. He's trying to take something to you. Well, back to Hermano Omar, you know, they started coming here maybe now about 10 years ago. And, and um, you know, y'all all know what we teach and, and preach here. Uh, there, there are some people out there saying that we're preaching wrong, right? They don't believe in, in faith or, or prosperity or any of those things. But it's in the word of God. If you read your word and you discern it correctly, it's in the word of God. Well, anyway, he, he started tithing faithfully. They've been faithful tithers. Um, Amano Omar, he works as, uh, in the, at, at school, but in the, in the janitorial, I don't know what they call it, maintenance department. I guess there's two, but he, he cleans schools, right? And his wife, she, um, she cleans houses. And they've been coming, and they've been t faithful with their tithing. And uh, the hermano is from Honduras, and he took a vacation. 
He went uh, to Honduras for a couple of weeks. He wasn't here with us. And he came back with a testimony what he went to do. He went to buy a house in Honduras. He bought beachfront property, cash, I believe. And he said now he owns a house in beachfront in Honduras next to all the rich people. He goes, a house next to Arnold Schwarzenegger, a house next to all these celebrities that go down there and buy property. He goes, I own a house there as well. Now, that's the blessing of the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. You would think, oh, he has a high paying job. He doesn't. And he's given testimony too of the property. He, they have a little, you know, acres out in, in Dale. They have a beautiful home and and, you know, just with what um, their work and their faithfulness, you know, and the Lord's blessed them over and over, you know, and he brings testimony all the time. And, and I'm just bringing that up because I know I've heard a lot of testimony and it's people that um, I'm not trying to boast, right, but that have started, have been a, a, a part of this family and, and they said under our teaching, and, and the Lord, and they've been faithful, and they've been givers, and they're prospering, you know? I was, you know, my parents, I always tell you about my parents, their social security didn't change, and they started coming here, and mom says, I have more than enough. She goes, I don't know, it multiplies. My dad used to tell me, he goes, nothing changed. We have still have the same bills, the same money, but we have extra, more extra. <laughs> You're giving into good ground. I always testify, my brother back there, you know, his house is paid, his cars are paid, he's faithful tither, he's blessed, Amen. you know, and I'm sure he has a hefty bank account, but, <laughs> but glory, glory to God, right, you know, so I am proud, you know, because I know that, you know, you're, you're, the Lord's showing me this is good ground, amen, and that, that um, you have the heart that a heart like ours, that we love the Lord and, and, and we wanted to, we love y'all and we give, right, to where we're being taught. Amen? Amen. So glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Uh, two other uh, ministries of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has a prophetic ministry. We go to John 16 and verse 13. <clears throat> it says, however, when he is talking about the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth has come. He will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. Amen. When we allow the Holy Spirit, the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit to, to lead us, he, he's going to tell you of things to come. And, and you need to pay attention, you know, because he's not going to mislead you. Amen? Amen. He wants to, to show you things so that you can better prepare for your future. Amen? Amen. Um, uh, the examples I'm going to give you, they're my examples personally, but if you listen to the Holy Spirit and you allow the Holy Spirit to guide you, to guide you he's going to lead you and direct you in the way you should go. In the 90s, in the 90s, uh, my husband and I, we had really good jobs, and we made a lot of money back then, and, but we were living paycheck to paycheck, and, and we were tithing. But this is prior to me being set free from, uh, from unforgiveness, amen, because that will hold this, the, the blessing back. And uh, once when I, when I broke that, the, the, I began to hear the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit told me I needed to get out of debt. And so one night, I'm up at midnight, and I, I got all my bills, and it was a big pile, and I prayed over them, and I said, Lord, I'll do what you tell me. Just show me how to do it. And he started showing me how to do it, step by step. He sent me to, you know, I, I, the next morning, I got in my car, and I turned on the radio, and there was a, a talk radio show, show called Money Matters, and it was a guy named Larry Briquette. He's gone to be with the Lord now, and he started teaching on he, he caught my attention because he was teaching on how to get out of debt. That's how specific that's the Holy Spirit is. He will tell you something, and then he will guide you and send everything that you need to get 
to, if you were in obedience, to get to where you need to be. Yes. And so we, st we started that process, and eventually we got out. In 1997, I figured, you know, we were trying to downsize. We had a really big house and a lot of big yard, and, and we were just tired of working on it. And, and we wanted to downsize, so we started looking for a house, put our house in the market and everything. We got down to a closing. We were going to close on this house, and they had inspections and everything. And then at the last minute, the lady that the, was going to live there, she backed out. And at the same time, we were looking for houses because if our soul, we were going to have to move. And we saw a lot of houses here in Lockhart in town, and nothing satisfied me. Everything was way too small, and it was used, you know, and there wasn't much new. There's not like today that there's so many neighborhoods going up. And so nothing could be found, and then it, you know, it didn't go through. So we just, we just took it as, Lord, it's not your timing. So we just stayed put. You know, and the good thing about it, we had a huge garage sale and got rid of so many, so many things <laughs> that we didn't need, you know? Because you probably have money in your garage if you just clean it out and have a garage sale, you'll have some extra cash, you know? The Lord will bring extra cash to you. And so it was, it was not the right timing. So um, in 1998, uh, the business where my husband was working sold and he had had it in his heart long before, you know, we were in debt, but we weren't really, uh, you know, so that we didn't know what we were doing. We, we, were, we were buying and selling um, rental houses. We had a rental house, and, and in 91, we had bought the property across the street. Amen? Because, y'all remember when it used to be farmers? Does anybody remember how it used to look? Do you remember? <laughs> well, anyway, we bought that in 91, so here we are in 98. And, my, and so my husband moves on, and uh, he goes, it's time that I move on to myself. The plan was, we did have a plan, and it was that when, when he got to be, you know, he was a, around 50, I guess, at this time. And um, he says, when I get older, they're going to kick me out because the business that we're in, they look for young blood. They want young, strong men that that can do the job, you know. And he goes, I'm gonna, I just want some place where I can work by myself and, you know, make some money and, and, and we'd be good. Amen? So that was our plan. So in 98, luckily we were out of debt. And he moved out and we started the business across the street. And so I continued to work in my job. I had a state job. I get paid once a month. And so we were able to make it with that. So I continued working for a couple of years while, while he got the business off the ground. But it, we weren't trying to build a business like we have today. He was just saying, just a place where I can work and make money, kind of like, like Ms. Mr. McDuffie that was running Farmers and He just fixed a few cars and made money for his family, and that's what we had planned. But the Lord had bigger plans for us. And now you see what we have across the street is it's greater than the both of us. Amen? Amen. And it's a blessing from the Lord. But the Lord knew specifically where we're going to be in the future, and he wanted us to get prepared. Amen? So He, if you listen and follow after him, he will lead you. Amen? And so he led us out of that, and he told us uh, in the future. And if you look to the Bible... And the Bible is full of, of prophetic prophecies, prophetic ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was speaking to the prophets and in the Bible, right? He told uh, Apostle Paul, we have 2 Timothy in chapter 3. He told Apostle Paul, and he wrote about what our society was going to be in this time that we're in right now. If you go read 2 Timothy chapter 3, it'll tell you, we're, what we're living today. He says we're going to go through perilous times. That they're going to be men that are lovers of themselves. And, you know, they're just looking out for number one. They don't care about anybody else. And that's where we are today. Nobody cares. You know, they just care about, about themselves. They don't care about anybody else. Amen? And I hope that we're not, you know, like, um, like in the employees, a lot of the employees, and a lot, it's hard to find people that want to work because, they don't want to work hard. They want you to pay them tons of money, but they don't want to work. 
And my first concern is them. My first concern is that if they, because the word tells me, if they work an uh, honest week, I owe them honest money and I need to pay them good. Amen? So that's, that's something you're thinking about someone else. And, and in society today, it's just, well, you know where we're at, right? And go read that chapter and read it all through and you'll see we're, we're, we're living it right now. That was the prophetic ministry of the Holy Spirit that told Paul, Paul and he wrote it in the letter to Timothy. Also, the greatest one that we see is the, the, the revelation that was given to John. It's one revelation in the book, in this book. It's 22 chapters, but it's one revelation from God, from Jesus. And he gave it to John, and he wrote down everything that we're going to see in the future. Amen? Amen? So that's a, a, a prophetic ministry of the Holy Spirit that we can see what we're going to go through in the future. And it is good for us, amen, because we have the victory. Hallelujah. So here, Jesus was speaking to everybody. You know, he's speaking to everybody, all of us, to believers, amen, and unbelievers, if you read the word, amen. He wants to let you know what's coming up ahead so that you'll be prepared. And it's, it's not just, you know, it, it's in every aspect of your life. You know, and uh, <clears throat> he, he even told me way before uh, Pastor Kyle and Bianca told me that they were moving to California, the Lord had already put it in my heart. I heard a word. Amen? Because sometimes you're going to hear a word from someone else, a preacher or somebody that's speaking to you. Amen? And we were in a minister's conference, and, and there was a word spoken that he said that a lot of people from California had moved out, but there were a lot of people that were going to start going back to California because there's a big move of God going on in California. There's a big group of young people all over the world. We might not see it here, but there's big groups of young teenagers, millennials, uh, rising up and loving the Lord and, and, and on, on fire for the Lord. You might not see that fire here, but it's going on. It's burning, and it's probably, yeah. it's going to consume us. You know, I remember the, 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 the dream that I had. I, the, a lot of my dreams, are, I believe, are prophetic dreams from the Lord. And I was sharing with the, this morning that I saw uh, before when we were building um, Vision Church, when it was still under construction, and I was in here. I saw my grandson. He was with me. He hadn't, it was in 2008, so it was way before he was born, but he was with me. And I saw a, a big group of young people running over that uh, fence right there, the, the, that wall that's holding the dirt up over there in front of us, just jumping over it, running to the, to the church. I'm still waiting for that day. You know, just because you have a, a prophecy it doesn't mean it's going to happen right now, but it will happen Amen. if you keep hold of that word. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So when I heard that word, I, I kept it in my heart and I go, oh, Lord, no, please don't let my kids move away. They just moved back to, to Lockhart. Don't let them move. So, so when they did say that they were moving, it wasn't a shock to me. I knew it was coming. I just didn't want to accept it. But it was coming. But why did the Holy Spirit share that with me? Because he wanted me to be prepared for it. Amen? And so we had to believe that, that the Lord did call them there. Because they're in the position that they are now. And everything that they went through to move there. And how the Lord uh, took care of them in every step. And, and how they're even affording to live in that place. With not a whole lot of money. You know, it's got to be God. It's, and the Holy Spirit is there to guide you and direct you. Amen? Amen? He wants you to be prepared, and he wants, you, um, he wants to let you know what's coming so that you will be prepared and, that, and, and, and you will be caught off guard. He wants to help you. Amen? Amen. So we need to listen to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit also has a glorifying ministry. Amen? In John 16, 14, it says... He will glorify me. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. For he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. 
Amen? He will glorify him. And that's what we were doing this morning as worship. You know, the sister was, was apologizing because of her voice. Or she couldn't sing good, but it was awesome. Amen. Because we're not here to, to hear how she's singing or hear how they're playing, if they play off key or not off key. I don't know. I'm not a musician. It all sounds good to me. You know, as, as long as we're glorifying the Lord. Amen? Because it's not about all of that. It's about you connecting with, with God and, and worshiping in him, you know? Do you find, do you find yourself like in, in church and you're in church and, and, and are you afraid to raise your hands or glorify God? I don't want to do this. I don't want to wave at y'all with my arms, but. <laughs> but you raise your arms and, and you glorify God and you close your eyes and you, you know, the song you said that I'm on my knees. I wanted to get on my knees, but I was afraid I'm not going to be able to get up. <laughs> and if Jesse wasn't there, he might not, I need somebody to help me up. So, but, you know, in, in my mind, I'm, I'm, I'm on my knees before him. It's the Holy Spirit working in you. The Holy Spirit is, is, is not visible. It, it, it's not tangible. It's not um, like something you can feel. It's not material. It's a spirit. Amen? And, and he wants to glorify the Lord, but he can't do it on his own. He can't do it without you. He needs your arms to be raised. He needs you to sing to him. He needs you to glorify him with your mouth. He needs you to, to dance, to jump. Amen? Amen. I, I, I love that first song that he's under my feet. I, you know, I usually throw my shoes off, but these are hard to throw off. I have to unbuckle them. It was a lot, but, uh, you know, and, and I don't know. It's also, it's just awesome when, when you, when the music is all about Jesus and not about how it's being sung. It's about how you're singing it. Amen. Are you making it your own? Yeah. And the Holy Spirit's desire is to worship God to to glorify him but he can't do it without you and you just surrender here I am Lord let's worship our God together amen, amen. let's worship him hallelujah glorify the Greek understanding for the word glorify can is it's rendered to mean to extol to praise to magnify to worship to give honor to give adulation or to ex express one's fame or, or repute. So when Jesus said that the spirit of him shall glorify me, he, he's really saying the Holy Spirit's role is to extol me, to magnify me, to glorify and worship him. Amen? So we're here to worship him. In Philippians 2.9, it says, Therefore also... Has high, therefore God has also highly exalted, that's our relation to the Lord, exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. Thank Amen. You. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit cannot worship without you. Amen. Amen. And you need to be in that presence. I, I remember it, uh, when it was all Spanish and still in the Spanish service, it's just something about singing in Spanish. I mean, I mean, it just cuts to your heart. And, and if you close your eyes and you worship, and I'd be up here in front, I close my eyes, and, and when, when my knees weren't acting up, they, they're, they're getting stronger every day, right? And I'd get on my knees, and I'd get on my face, and I worship the Lord, and I'm crying, and, and, and if I close my eyes, I'm right before the throne of glory. Hallelujah. I'm right there in the throne, and then the music stops, and it's over, and I get up and try to make clean my face, and, and I look around to see, did anybody else go with me? Were we all up before the throne? And I look back, especially people sitting behind me, and they're like, <laughs> uh, did you even raise your hands? <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. You know, maybe, maybe you're embarrassed. You know, I'm going to raise my hands. Somebody's going to say, you know, they're talking about me because maybe my aunt hands are up or maybe I'm crying or maybe you know whatever it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what anybody thinks you're here to worship God we're here to love on him and the Holy Spirit wants to do that but he needs your body 
and you need to surrender Amen. and allow him to work Lord. through you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. The Holy Spirit is the glorifier and the worshiper. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we need to let him loose in our hearts. Let him loose in our bodies. Amen. It's his, it's his service. It's his, it's his time. And, and we just need to let him do what he wants to do through us. And like Sister Grace, was re, uh, we were worshiping this morning. He wants our lips to be filled with Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you did for me on that cross. Thank you, Lord. You're so awesome. You came to save me. You came to heal me. You came to prosper me. You came to take care of me. You, you, you left us, but you left us the Holy Spirit that is, that's someone exactly like you, another helper, somebody the same but different, but the same, if that makes sense. And we've gone over that, so y'all know what I'm talking about. So let the Holy Spirit take you, amen, he wants to be before the throne of glory, and if, I promise you, if you close your eyes, you can even almost see the throne right before you, amen. That's the glorifying ministry of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. So now we're going to switch gears a little bit. We're going to go to James 4.4. 4. We've been, um, last time we were talking about the ministries of the Holy Spirit. And now we're going to talk about just us spiritually, amen? And James 4.4, 4, it, <clears throat> let me tell you a little bit about James. <laughs> James is a half-brother of Jesus, right? And he was the pastor at the church in Jerusalem. And if you read the book of James, the book of James is talking about um, life, you know, it's talking about faith, it's talking about the testing of our faith and, and, and the, the trials that, that we'll encounter and, and, and how, how to overcome overcome come them excuse me and here he he's he's like I would be here he's preaching and it the church in Jerusalem Jerusalem was a big church amen and he comes in and he starts to preach to the, the whole James is is a pastor and so you could read it all like a like a sermon amen and so James comes in and he and he yells at them because there's an exclamation mark. And he doesn't say, well, brothers and sisters, today we're going to talk about the Holy Ghost. No, he comes in and he's yelling at them saying, adulterers, adulteresses. That's hard. That's hard words. You would think I'd lost my, my mind if I came in here and started yelling at you like that, calling you an adulterer or an adulteress. And you go, what's wrong with her? But that's what he's doing here. And it has an exclamation point. <laughs> I love you. And he, yeah, no, but he, he's, he's really getting after him. He goes, do you not know that friendship with the world is in enmity with God? Who, whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Those are hard words. Amen. Did you know that? I thought about Sister Sandra that smashed us last month. They didn't know. <laughs> Do you know that? That is, if you're a friend with the world, the Bible, the word here says that we're in, in, in an enmity with God. Amen? And that was really strong language back then, and it would be strong language now. He wasn't talking about physical adultery he was talking about spiritual adultery because if he was talking about real adultery I mean he was talking to to Jewish believers and in their law if you uh, were caught in adultery you you were to be stoned to death so this was a serious accusation the serious point he was trying to make to his congregation amen and the Greek <clears throat> adultery 
it carries the, uh, you know all kinds of things and and these are just a few things that that it stands for it's unfaithfulness impurity and violating a commitment to marriage it says that the word this this word paints a picture of a w wounded spouse who feels rejected betrayed misled and deceived because of the, the sancti sanctity of his or her marriage relationship was recklessly thrown away by the act of adultery. All these things is what he's saying to, the, to these people. And all these emotions, all these feelings was what, um, what the Holy Spirit feels when, when we make the world, when the world is more important and we give more attention to the world and we give attention to the Holy Spirit and our relationship with the Lord. That's how he feels. Amen. Have you ever been betrayed? It feels like somebody punched you in the stomach and knocked the air out of you. It's an awful feeling. Can you imagine the Lord? That's how the Lord feels when, when, when we don't pay attention to him. When, when we don't think nothing of him. Amen. So these, these were really hard. Hard. What he was saying to, to his church. And it, let's read it again. It says adulterers and adulteresses. First of all. And then he says, do you not know? Don't you know? I guess. <laughs> I think y'all heard a message like that last week. Don't you know? They didn't know, right? And it says, friendship with the world is an enmity with God. Amen? Amen? So whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. This is a very strong picture of what was going on. And, and, and you know, Jesus considers it to be adultery when your mind is on something else besides him. Because we're the bride of Christ. We're his bride. We're his wife. He's our husband. And when I neglect him and, and I don't spend time with him and I put other things in the world before him, it's going to make him feel unloved, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you feel unloved? I think if my husband would pay attention to everything else in the world and not pay attention to me or, 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 or spend time with me, I would be sad, wouldn't you? I think we would be sad. And I wouldn't want to sadden the Lord. Amen? It says that it's for when, we, when we involve us more with the world, we're fraternizing with the enemy. It's like... That sounds like a movie, Sleeping with the Enemy. Yeah. <laughs> Scary movies, right? <laughs> so, as you think about this, you know, it says no in the Greek refers to firsthand knowledge. So, in, in here in this, it's, he's telling them, don't you know? Don't you understand? Haven't you grasped it by now? If you're living more in the world than you are living a life with Christ, you're an enemy of God. And after everything he's done for you, amen, after everything the Lord has done for you and you turn your back on him and you don't spend time with him, you don't talk to him, you don't even acknowledge him, that's hurtful. Amen? It says friendship comes from a Greek word that is taken out of the word phileo, which means uh, a friendship, a love of friendship, but it's a love uh, toward other people and other things. Amen. It says phileo describes affection, attachment, devotion, endearment, or familiarity. It can also be used to portray an intense sentiment between two or more people. And if you keep studying out, it comes down to even, you know, kissing someone. It's a friendship, like endearment. Amen? Amen? And so what James was um, trying to get to, to his congregation is that they were, 
they were being attracted more to the world than they were being than they were to the Lord. In other words, they were losing their first love. Amen. <clears throat> Is there anything in your life that's keeping you from loving on the Lord? It, it, it's something in your mind taking more, more space in your mind than, than the Lord? If you think back, I, I think we mentioned it sometimes on Wednesday nights, you know, we think back, back in the day. Oh, I remember because sister said, oh, I'm up here talking and I'm in shorts. <laughs> I said, oh, my gosh. I remember when we were little, we, we couldn't wear shorts to church or pants. You know, it was, we, we, had, we had to be in a dress, and if we wore pants, it was kind of looked bad down, right? It's not bad to wear pants. I wore pants one day, and I told the, I told the pastor, I said, Pastor, I'm wearing pants today. Is that okay? <laughs> no, but you're going to be mad at me because I wore pants. It doesn't matter what you're wearing. Amen. But we start um, conforming to the world more than we are living by the word of God. Um, there's 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 a thin line that we 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 might cross in paying more attention to what's going on in the world than what we're going through. I mean, then our relationship with the Lord. Do you remember what used to be called sin? Ten years ago, that today we just, nah, it's nothing. You remember anything like that? Even on TV shows. You know, I don't watch a whole lot of TV shows um, because they got really risque, you know, TV shows. So I don't watch them. I'm not saying you don't watch TV. I, I like the Hallmark channels, especially right now. I love Christmas in July, and they've got Christmas in July movies. I love them. Amen. And then the movies that they show, they're, they're clean movies. There's, there, there's no sex involved and there's no, you know, backstabbing and, you know, all this kind of stuff. They're just wholesome movies. And, and my husband makes fun of it because, you know, the movie's coming to an end. And he goes, is the movie over? Especially if he walks in and, and there's a scene where, where the main character, man, a main character, woman are kissing. And he goes, oh, I guess it's over because that's the only thing you'll see at the end. They come together and they, they kiss. Oh, the movie's over. <laughs> they, they, they kissed. And so, but they're wholesome movies. Now they are changing. You know, in the last 10 years, they're changing. I, you know, I don't, I don't like the shows that they're showing when, when it's about two females or two males. They just don't sit right with me and, and I don't watch them. Just change the channel. And, and I have a program, uh, an app on my TV. It's called Pure Flix. They, they're Christian movies, and, and they're good movies. They're documentaries. And uh, um, things that will edify me. Because if I'm not careful, then all that's going to be okay. And I'm going to accept everything that's on the TV. And I'm going to conform to that. And, and I'm going to lose my focus on, on the Lord. I'm not telling you not to watch movies. You can watch whatever you want, you know. But to me, you know, the Holy Spirit convicts me. I have to do what the Holy Spirit tells me or else I'm going to be in disobedience. It's not wrong. Or going to movies. I, I, I one time had a, a pastor couple. We, we, were, we were out. Uh, after a service late at night, and well, not real late, but um, we were having coffee, and and uh, my daughter had called me. She wanted to go to a late show, a movie, and uh, when she still lived at home, and I was going to go with her because it was a late night movie, and it wasn't a movie. And I said, um, she's going to pick me up in a minute. I'm going to go with my daughter uh, to a movie. And the pastor lady, was, she was kind of a religious lady, she told me, you can't do that. And I said, why not? She goes, that's wrong. You're not supposed to go to movies. And you're not supposed to go this late at night and without your husband. I said, I'm going with my daughter. And it's a good movie. 
And I don't think the Lord's going to mind me going to a movie and spending time with my daughter. So I'm not saying don't watch movies. Watch whatever you want. But And the Holy Spirit will, it'll, it'll set wrong with you. We've been watching movies sometimes that we got up and left because it didn't turn out to be what we thought it was going to be. Amen? And, and if it doesn't sit well, well, it's okay to get up and leave. If it doesn't sit well with you, amen? And, you know, we just um, changed our TV service. We, were, we had Spectrum, and we changed to Dish, right? Dish. And we have so many channels you, you never watch. I have three channels that I watch. They're all the Hallmark channels, the HGTV channel. And that's pretty much what I watch when I, when I sit down and watch TV. And my husband brought to my attention, he was going through all, you know, because he, he finds good movies. I said, where'd you find that movie? It's like in the 300s or whatever. I said, I don't have time to go through all those channels, but they're, they're good movies. And he likes kind of romantic movies that have a little war in it, you know, war movies. I don't like war movies, he does. And then some of the movies he watches, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're kind of romantic movies. And I thought, oh, that's a nice movie. But he always finds that. And, and he showed me a channel, and he goes, there's, did you know there's a channel on here that shows you how to have gay sex? I said, you're kidding me. And he, sh he showed me where it was, and, you know, we just read the description. And it's a channel that shows you how to have a gay relationship. Now, that was not unheard of like 10 years ago, right? But, we, but we, th we think it's okay. It's okay. And then we accept it. And then we get just like the world. We're no different than the world. And, and, it, and, and we're compromising. We're compromising the word. Amen? And there's so many things that, that we do that we think, you know, is... It's not doing anything. It's not hurting anyone. You know, but we let the world creep in a little bit, a little bit, a little bit more. You know, I think about all the young families that, that used to be part of our church before COVID, and we had a, a big group of little kids. We had like 25 kids in our, in our morning classes. And it was young families that came, and now they don't come to church after COVID. You know, but, but they don't stay home. We see them, you know, they, they put everything on Facebook. You know, they're at the park or they're at the beach or they're doing this or they're doing that. Everything, everything in the world, which is good things to do, right? It's good to go on a vacation. It's good, you know, to have a family outing or to go to the park. You want to spend time with your children. And if you're working all the time, weekends are the best time to do them. But don't forget about the Lord. Not every Sunday, right? Not every Sunday. And, and <clears throat> do they know that the more comfortable they get living like the world, the farther they're getting away from the Lord? I'm hoping and praying that they're in, going to another church or in a church. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be this one but that they're in a church because they get so conformed to the world. We're supposed to be transformed, not conformed. And they don't know that they're becoming an enemy of the Lord. Amen? And it just takes a little bit at a time that we let the world into our lives, into our heart. Even the news. You know, I'll start watching the news and I get tense. I don't watch the news anymore. I'll watch the Christian news. I've told you all that. But sometimes even the reality of what's going in the world overwhelms me because they tell you the truth. <laughs> they tell you all the bad with the good, but it overwhelms me. So sometimes I'd rather not watch it. And the other day I made the, we were going to bed and we turned on to, to see the weather. And the news was coming on. And the first thing they're talking about, the, all the little kids that died in in the town here near here in Texas. What's it called? Uvalde, there you go. And I, I mean, I just, the minute I heard that in my, you know, I just felt like 
like stressed and tense, and I go, I tell my husband, turn it on, turn it off, I don't want to hear it. I know what happened. I know mistakes were made, children were killed. I know it's hard. It shouldn't have happened, but I don't want to be hearing it over and over and over and over, but that's the way the enemy creeps into your life, you know? If we live our life over and over and over, not making the Holy, spending time with the Holy Spirit or with the Lord in the mornings before we get our, our, our day going or late at night before we go to bed, if we don't, if we don't fill up with that, we're going to be full of the world. We're going to be full with, with the stresses of life. And, it, and it's just coming between us and the Lord. Amen. We go to Ephesians 4, 25 to 32. We're going to find out what some of the things that, that the, the people in this church were doing that was making them more worldly. Amen. <clears throat> in Ephesians 4, 25 and 32, here we see specifics, specifics about what grieves the Holy Spirit. In verse 25, it says, therefore, putting away lying. Have you ever lied? <laughs> we try not to, right? So it's real easy for the world to creep in. I'm not saying I'm perfect because, you know, I've, I have too much. I have so much at work to do right now. It's just some things that we're going through. And and I've got people trying calling me and wanting to sell me things. And, and Peggy will answer the phone, tell them I'm busy. I'm in a meeting. You see, I'm talking to him. I'm not lying, but technically I am lying. I'm not telling an honest truth, right? So I'm not perfect. Pray for me. <laughs> it's not a lie, right? But it is. Let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor. I'm not telling them the, the truth. I said, look, it's I have to make some hard decisions. I'm a CEO, and sometimes I'm not in the mood to make those decisions. And I've had this guy calling me, and I know I have to make a decision, but I hadn't, I hadn't had the counsel yet. I needed to consult with my husband. I needed to consult with my son, and I needed to make sure that we were all in agreement before I made a decision. And I was just avoiding his call, which was, I wasn't lying, but I was just avoiding the call. I called him back. I don't know when. But I, I, I got it done. I got to it. <laughs> Be angry, but don't sin. It says 26, and it says, do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Don't go to bed angry and all tense and mad and disrupt your sleep. Number 27, nor give place to the devil. Don't open the door to the devil. Amen? Because he'll walk right in and and try to destroy you. I know, I lived it for, for a few months. You know, my husband did everything but grab me and, and slap me a few times to help me. Stop it! I said, I know, I just can't get out of it. Because he got me good. And I, and I, let, I, I let fear come in. And it wasn't, it's not from the Lord. Amen? So don't open the door to that. 28, let him who stole steal no longer. Nobody here steals, right? But ra rather let him labor, working with his hands, what is good that he may be, that he may have something to give him who has need. 29, that's being a giver, right? 29, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. You got to watch what you're saying, man. But what good, but what is good for necessary edification that you may impart grace to the hearers? 30, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. You know, this scripture, I have read it so many times, and the other day um, my husband was preaching it, and that word for just stood out to me. It just hit me. I said, we're sealed. Yeah, we're, I understand that. We're sealed. And, and all of a sudden that for for the day of redemption, we're sealed, we're protected. Our spirit is protected because our spirit is, is the same spirit that we're going to take into eternity. And right now, it's sealed for the day of redemption, for that time. Because we're redeemed, but we, our bodies haven't been redeemed yet. 
but our spirit is being protected. Does that make sense? I don't know. One day it just spoke volumes to me. 31, it says, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Thank you, Lord. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, yes. forgiving one another. Yes. <clears throat> forgiving or unforgiveness will block your blessings or the ability to hear from the Lord. Even as God in Christ forgave you. Amen. So we need to make our relationship a number one priority, our relationship with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus. Amen. Because all these things, all these things that we spoke here, when Jesus was speaking to his congregation, he was seeing the hypocrisy and, and the legalism that was coming into his church. And he was he was trying to, to wake up the church and tell them, listen, listen to what you're doing. Quit doing that. Quit doing these things. Quit lying about one another. Quit lying to each other. Amen? If you're angry or, you know, or somebody hurt you, forgive them and let them go. Because you keep yourself in a prison. You don't, it doesn't hurt them in any way. The only person that's being hurt is you. And you need to forgive and let go because it, in doing that, you, the, the Holy Spirit can, can have a relationship with you. You block that relationship with him. Amen? Amen? The Holy Spirit is the one who lives in us. He leads us. He guides us, teaches us, reminds us, comforts us, steal, s seals us, sanctifies us. Amen? God, Empowers God. us. And, and he works in our character to make us more like Jesus, amen, and to give us the mind of Christ. And that's what uh, we need to be focusing our attention on, amen? So we thank the Lord and the Holy Spirit for that. And we need to be listening to him and not ignore him, amen? You know, I've ministered to a lady that's much older than me and and I would visit with her sometimes, and we'd talk about uh, the Lord. And, and she was saying, you know, the Lord told me to do this, or the Lord told me to do that. But, and I said, well, did you do it? And she goes, no, I didn't do it. And she's still, you know, trying to figure out, what should I do? And I said, well, the Lord told you what to do. But the more we don't listen to the Holy Spirit, if we don't do what he tells us to do, then... We're grieving him. We're, we're, you know, why? He's going to eventually quit telling you anything because you're not, you don't listen. You're not, you're not being obedient. It, it, you, you need to get quiet. Amen? You know, because we go before the Lord and we pray and, and, and we need to quiet our mind down. We need, we need to, you know, get it back together because the minute you start praying, you start thinking of all the things you have to do. You know, when I get to work, I have to, return this call, <laughs> I, I have to do this, I have to do that, and, and, and your mind's going 100 miles an hour, and you need to stop it. Wait, come back, hold on, get before the Lord, get your mind quiet, pray, and let's ask the Holy Spirit, what do you have me do today? What, what, what am I supposed to be doing today? What, what, what do I need to do to plan for my future? Or, or what ex I have this big decision to, to make. Uh, what, do I, what do I do, Lord? And he'll lead you. The Holy Spirit's there to help you, to lead you, protect you, guide you. He wants to help you succeed in life. Thank you, Lord. And, and for every situation, anything. Have you, tried, have you ever asked the Lord something? And, I mean, ask the Lord and the Holy Spirit to answer you? He'll tell you right away. I mean, sometimes right exactly, I've, you know, I've been praying, you know, I'd pray for my son. And one time I was praying about a specific thing that, that I was watching him do. And I got before the Lord and I was praying and the Lord told me, leave him alone. He, uh, I got this. It wasn't bad. I was just seeing it the wrong way. Amen. It was political viewpoint. He'll tell you right away. I've had questions about 
family members, and I'm going, Lord, why are they like this? Why? And if I'm quiet, you know, because sometimes we're asking questions and, and, and reading our, 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 you know, our, our grocery list. This, I need this, I need that, and blah, 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 blah. And amen, and we're gone, but we don't stop to listen to the answers. And the Lord answered me and gave me answers to my questions. Amen? He'll answer you. You have a, a big problem before you? Get before the Lord and, and ask him. You know, it's not, it might not be the decision you think you need to make. Maybe it's a whole different decision. It's not our ways. It's his way. And the Holy Spirit is there to show us his way, his wisdom. Amen? You need that wisdom. Get before the Holy Spirit and ask him, Lord, I need help here. Ask him specifically what you want and he'll give it to you. Amen? Thank you, Lord. He's holy. The reason he's called the Holy Spirit is because he's holy. In Romans 1, 4, it says, And declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness. Amen. He's called the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Amen. You know, uh, Pastor Lujan in the Spanish service, he, he's always, pre well, not always, but he preaches about you know, how the Holy Spirit is holy and, and the way we live our lives, the, the words that we speak, you know, and I don't know all the other races, but I know in, in the Hispanic race, or, or I knew a man, <laughs> my father-in-law and, and some of my husband's brothers, that every other word they talked was a, was a curse word. And I was going, oh my God, but that's the way they talk. But the, the Lord is listening to those words. And if you've been born again, then you're, you haven't been transformed yet. Because once you're born again, okay, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. But now you need to, to renew your mind to the word of God and transform. And he will take those kind of language away from you. He'll give you a new language. He'll, he'll clean you up, you know. But if you are and then you're still speaking these things. Or he gives the example, you know, you're, you know, you're still going to the bars or to the dances and, and, and being like the world and the Holy Spirit says, I'm holy, I can't go in those places. He can't go. But guess what? You're, if he's in you, what are you doing? You're dragging him in there with you. You know, every time he sees there, I say, well, it says that he will never forsake us or leave us. He's always with us. He can't leave us. He's sealed in us because that's a real you. And he does make this point. You take him with you into these nasty and filthy places with you. He's there with you. You know? I, you know, I remember that the years that I was in unforgiveness and I couldn't hear the spirit of the Lord, but everywhere that I went that I wasn't supposed to be, Everybody else had a good time, and I always had a miserable time. I didn't understand why. It was because I wasn't supposed to be there. It was the Holy Spirit telling me, you're in the wrong place, but I couldn't hear. Why? Because my ears were shut, because I couldn't forgive, and I had hate and bitterness and all these things that grieved the Holy Spirit. And I didn't realize I was grieving him because I was living like the world and not living for Christ. Even though I was in church every Sunday. Amen. So there could be a lot of us still here at church every Sunday, but our attitude and, and we haven't changed. But when I realized that it was, he never left me. He was always with me. Only I dragged him. I dragged him in to the filthiness and the, the dirtiness of, you know, whatever I was around. People sp speaking ugly languages being in, watching movies that I wasn't supposed to watch or, or, or demonic stuff. There's movies that, that's about devils and, and, you know, zombies and all this kind of stuff. I don't watch any of that because to me that's, uh, you know, I, I can't deal with it. And I don't watch movies that are stressful. I can't. I have to stay away from it. I just can't, you know. But it's not, it, 
it, you know, and I'm not telling you not to watch these kind of movies, you know. I have to be careful when, when, when I go to my, to see my grandkids because they, they, there's, they have, there's certain movies they're not supposed to watch and some of them are even cartoons. And so the kids, when their moms aren't there, I'm like, oh, grandma, I'm gonna watch YouTube or I'm gonna do this. And I said, uh, does your mommy and daddy let you go in there? Or I have to call their mom because sometimes they try to put one over on me. <laughs> no, you can't watch that. <laughs> no, you know, and they're not bad. I mean, you know, but if we start conforming, we start filling them up, their little minds with things that, that, that aren't of this, you know, that shouldn't be. Amen. So the Lord is holy. Lord. Amen. Amen. My husband's preached out a lot. Is he's holy and and he can't be in places like that. But we drag him through the through the filth and through the mud. Amen. Because he's in us and he will not beat us. Amen. So we need to remember, remember that the Holy Spirit lives in you. What you do today in life, you're doing it to the Holy Spirit. Where you go today, he goes with you, wherever you go. When you go to the movies, he goes with you. When you look on the internet, he goes with you. <laughs> He's watching. When you choose to sin, you're dragging him with you through that filth. Amen? Do you really want to grieve the Holy Spirit? Right? Think about it. So make a decision today to never forget that the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. Amen? And he deserves your utmost respect and honor in all that you say and do. Amen? The word of God tells us that, that we're going to give an account for every word that we've spoken, right? For every idle word that man has said, you're going to be before the judge and give account for it. So watch the words you're speaking today. Surrender to the Holy Spirit. Allow him to come into your life and help you live your life. Amen? Because he's here to help you. Amen? Amen? He's trying to help you live your, a better life today. God is so good. God is so good to us, and we need to allow him, surrender ourselves to him. Amen. I'm going to stop here. Um, I hope that y'all have got something out of this message today. Um, I still have a little bit more I want to share with you about the Holy Spirit. So next time I'm with you, I'll probably bring that message. I thought it was going to be finished today, but I, I wasn't planning on being absent <laughs> last Sunday. Oh, I would have wrapped it up today. But there's still more that I want to share with you. And, and I'm hope. I'm hoping that, that this is helping you. I know that y'all are all, you know, y'all have been, a, uh, you know, y'all are all Christian. You've been a Christian for a long time. You've, you've studied the word and you know about the Lord and the Holy Spirit. But it's good to be reminded. And it's good to, 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 to just be encouraged. Amen? So this morning, if there's anyone here that is just tired of living his life the way he's been living it, and you want to accept the Lord as your Lord and Savior. You want to change in your life. Amen. You want surrender to the Holy Spirit that he would come and live in you and, and help you live your life. Amen. Today's a good day to do that. Amen. I, I think everybody here is saved. But if anybody is watching us online, um, <clears throat> you just have to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. And you can just say a quick prayer with me. I said... Um, Heavenly Father, I believe in my heart that you love me and that you sent the Holy Spirit to help me and guide me and direct me. And I want that for my life. So I make you today, I confess with my mouth that I make you the Lord of my life. Come, Holy Spirit, and, and save me. Lord, I surrender. I surrender my life to you. Take it and do something with it. And I ask for the Holy Spirit to come into my life to guide me and direct me in the way I should go. And I give you all the honor. And I just thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in my life. I'm so excited because I know when I live a life in Christ, I'm going to be a whole lot better off than I am today. 
Thank you, Lord. I make you my Lord and Savior in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we believe you've been saved. You said a simple prayer like that. So if you have been and, and, and um, you said that this morning, welcome. We want to be the first ones to welcome you to the family of Christ. Amen. If you will send us an email or uh, connect with us on Facebook or um, through our website, we would love to send you a book that tells you about what you just did today. And we encourage you to get into a good Bible teaching church. Amen. A, a church is going to teach you the word. It's not going to water it down for you, make you feel good and happy, which the word itself should make you feel good and happy. But sometimes it steps on our toes and that's okay. Because that means we need to change something in our lives. Amen. It's not to hurt you. It's to help you. So get in a good Bible teaching church. And I want to go ahead and dismiss our viewing audience right now. And thank you for being with us. We'll see you next time.